So last, um, right, sorry for Tuesday. So there's some uh, difficulty to get together. Uh, we'll have a, a makeup class, I guess, um, one of these days. Um, we'll talk about it on Tuesday next week. All right. Um, so right. Um, so uh, uh, last week we ended by uh, saying um, what um, what Berger's factor was, um, and how it was related to this extra half plane, and that um, the this is just a convention, uh, the way you define the direction of the um, the Berger's factor, hmm? um, and up at this stage. Basically, uh, you can think of the Burgess factor as being um, the, um, the amount of uh, shift, lattice shift you have to give so that you kind of compress a, um, a um, extra half plane in, into the lattice. Hmm? And the, uh, the end of this line, as I said, was uh, the end of this extra half plane. That's what we call the uh, dislocation line. And um, we had already said that um, dislocations um, could, um, dislocation line doesn't have to be straight. It can just curve around um, in, in the crystal and, and go from a, an edge orientation to a screw orientation. And, and when it does that, um, whereas in the edge orientation, you can clearly see an extra half plane if, if you would look down the lattice, and that's actually what, what happens. Um, but you know, if, you, if, if the dislocation takes a turn, a 90 degree turn, then uh, your dislocation becomes a, a screw dislocation and there is no extra half plane to be seen anymore. Hmm? Okay, and the other thing, uh, yes, uh, we said is that uh, uh, before I, I continue, obviously you, 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 you probably all already noticed that in the case of an edge dislocation, the, uh, the Burgess vector is perpendicular to the uh, dislocation line, and that the, um, in the case of the screw dislocations, the uh, dislocation vector is parallel to the dislocation line. Hmm? Okay? And that, you know, if you're ever confronted with having to uh, decide, uh, you know, uh, the dislocations, uh, um, uh, where the extra half plane comes from, if you have a dislocation in the screw orientation, you don't have to worry, you just make it, you know, just think about a bend in your dislocation and uh, the burger, because the Burgess factor doesn't change and the dislocation line direction doesn't change either, you, you can easily find out using your uh, 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 right hand rule uh, on what side the uh, extra half plane is. And, and I illustrate it here. Hmm? Um, in, uh, so in steel, you have, uh, say you have a, a steel, a piece of steel, and uh, you know that it contains uh, many grains, and these grains are basically single crystals. So um, you, can, you can think of um, uh, inside uh, one grain of steel, um, a dislocation loop. We'll, we'll see where dislocation loops loop come from. Um, there is um, the different processes by which uh, we can make dislocation loop, but um, uh, we'll see that the, the uh, very important one in the case of, of steels is uh, the Frank Reed source. Hmm? And so anyway, we have a loop uh, that's been created in this um, uh, crystal. And um, we have a Burgess factor. We have a direction here. So if um, we look at the uh, edge parts, mm, uh, so the edge parts are where the dislocation Burgess factor is perpendicular to the line direction. So on one side, the dislocation will be in the uh, the extra half plane of the dislocation will be coming from top and on the other side it will necessarily come from the bottom. So the dislocation loop can collapse on itself. Yeah? 
So this, this location loop can become smaller. And when these two uh, meet, the dislocation will, will have disappeared, basically. Hmm? Okay. We'll, we'll talk more um, about uh, what it all means for me mechanics in a moment. But uh, so first of all, um, we, we won't go into the, uh, the, the, the math here. It's not really necessary. Um, the uh, dislocation core, yes, um, around the dislocation core, uh, already for uh, many years, uh, people have known what the um, stress field looks like. Yeah? And so the, the stress field is, depends on uh, two physical parameters, the uh, shear modulus and the Burgers vector. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, and again, I remind you of the fact that why we spend some time talking about elastic moduluses, moduli, and um, um, the, particularly the, the shear modulus. Uh, well, that's, that's one of the reasons, is because it, you know, in, in this location theory, it always pops up um, rather than Young's modulus. Okay, so that's why this uh, parameter is important, certainly if you're doing calculations at different temperature, different compositions, etc. So you've got, and, and then you have a, uh, a geometric parameter, like in this, in the case of the screw dislocation, it's uh, x divided by x squared plus y squared. So um, we, uh, so we won't go into the shape of these stresses uh, at this stage, but what, what is important is in the case of the, the screw dislocation, we have shear components, you know, because we have mixed indices, whereas in the case of the uh, edge dislocation, I also have uh, tensile components, yes? Right, and, and so we, we know how, uh, in addition to shear components, all right? Okay. Um, another, um, let me just go back here a moment. Uh, what you see is that all of these equations have uh, in the denominator x squared plus y, some form of x squared plus y squared x squared plus y squared, x squared plus y squared, and here also. What does this mean? X, um, x, uh, so if you have a, a coordinate system, and uh, you look at a point here, which has coordinates x and y, right? Uh, the distance, x squared plus y squared, yes? The root of this. So it means that when you go away from the dislocations, you have the, the stress fields decrease as one over the distance, right? So it's what, what it basically means is the stress field will be close to the dislocation and then die off uh, 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 as, uh, in, uh, as one over r. All right, good. So um, now dislocations are uh, uh, interesting uh, defects. We'll talk about other defects as, as, we, uh, as uh, uh, we continue this discussion on this, this chapter here. But dislocation are interesting uh, lattice defects uh, because they're, they're non-equilibrium lattice defects. Yeah? Uh, what's, uh, what, what do I mean here? Well, take for instance vacancies. Uh, you, know, you know that if you have a, a crystal and you heat it up at certain temperature, there will be an equilibrium concentration of vacancies inside your crystal. Hmm? Um, and uh, you know, as you increase temperature, reduce the temperature, you will make, you'll have more vacancies at high temperature, very uh, smaller amounts at uh, low uh, temperature. In the case of dislocation, it's, it's not like this. You really need to deform the crystal to introduce them. So thermal energy is, is not uh, enough to create dislocations. Hmm? Okay, so um, we'll just um, uh, look at the, the energy of a, a screw dislocation because it can be very uh, simply computed. Hmm? So uh, you can think of a screw dislocation as, uh, you remember you, we cut the crystal and we shifted the two parts with respect to one another by a vector uh, of the size b. Yes? 
Okay, we do, so this is the same thing here, except instead of looking at, uh, at a crystal, I just look at a, a cylinder of material where I can do the same. Hmm? Okay, so I shift. I have originally a, a nice cylinder. I make a cut along here, and then I shift the bottom part by a distance b. Okay, now um, it, it would look very, uh, and, and so obviously when I do this, you, um, uh, the uh, this cylinder yeah, that you uh, sheared will want to jump back, so it's got some elastic energy stored in there, right? And so the way you calculate this is by um, uh, noticing that if you unfold this, if if you would unfold this, uh, unwrap as it were, this uh, cylinder, yes. You, it would have been originally, it would have been a flat, uh, flat volume, a flat uh, rectangular volume here. And after the shearing by B, yes, by B, it, uh, it would look uh, like this. It would look like a sheared uh, rectangle. Hmm? And uh, elastically sheared, and so, uh, which would have a tendency to jump back in this direction. And so you, you can calculate the, the energy that is stored in this uh, elastically sheared uh, rectangle. Hmm? So the, the energy, the elastic energy of a screw dislocation is, so it's uh, the, the shear force hmm, times the amount of shear, yes? And then I need to, to multiply with uh, the, the, the volume of the material, hmm? the, the, the volume here that I'm shearing. Hmm? Okay, so, so you can already see here that the amount of energy I have will depend on the length of the cylinder. Yeah? The longer the cylinder I have, the more energy I will have. Okay, so, so I, I need to multiply with the length, yes, and uh, dA here. So. I, I plug in the, uh, the, the parameters, one half um, the shear force, that is uh, sigma xy, y, um, excuse me, yz, so that would be this parameter here, hmm, in this case, okay. um, uh, times uh, the shear, that's b divided by 2 pi r, 2 pi r is the height here of my uh, unfolded cylinder, so that's its circumference, obviously, mm, 2 pi r, um, times L times dA. Mm, that's dA is, the, is this uh, dark gray area, mm, um, so that's pi r plus dr square minus pi r square, and I only keep the terms, uh, or I, um, the terms in um, uh, dr square I, are small enough to be um, uh, set equal to zero. So I get um, an equation here that says the energy hmm, uh, for this, this piece here is uh, the, the stress times the Burgers factor times the length times dr divided by two. Hmm? So, okay. Now, uh, obviously, when we do this energy calculation, um, there are um, there, there, there are two important thing, things here, because if, if I want the total energy, I, I will have to uh, integrate over r, which is basically the distance from uh, the core, r equals zero, to, s to somewhere um, in space away from this dislocation, right? So there is here, um, with the computation of the energy of dislocation a little bit of a problem mm -hmm. um, and that's the choice of these boundaries you know the minimum radius and the maximum radius it turns out that you can't set r equal to zero when you calculate the full energy because this uh, these uh, stresses that we have derived mathematically uh, they don't apply to the core of the dislocation, yes? 
That's one thing. And then the other thing is that where does the cutoff end? You know, where do I say this is the end of the crystal? You, know, you can make the crystal very large, and so you know, I can cut off this integration at very high distances. Okay. Uh, so what people do is say, well, you know, if I don't have too many other defects, the limit of that integration is kind of the end of the crystal, right? That's, so that's a reasonable way of doing it. Um, and the, um, the core will just, avoid, will just avoid talking about it, yes? When we do this integration, we'll say there is, there we have cutoff limits and, and we'll integrate between these cutoff limits. So we have an inner cutoff limit, which is uh, 0.2 to 1 nanometer. Hmm? I remind you that uh, so the lattice parameter of, um, of, of steel is, is around 0.3. Yes, so it's, it's about somewhere between, somewhere slightly higher than a lattice parameter, that distance we around the dislocation that we consider the core of the dislocation where there's a heavy lattice distortion and where our elasticity laws don't apply anymore so and then for the outer cutoff distance well we take the end of the crystal but most of the time we we say well in and certainly in steels are we have a lot of dislocations so these dislocations will interact with each other. So the, the end of our integration will set at the distance between two dislocations. So, um, so when we compute, you know, we try to compute the energy of a dislocation, yes, we say, well, it will consist of an elastic energy and a core energy. So you, the total energy is a uh, core energy, which I'm not calculating, and the elastic energy which comes from integrating this equation here in the case of a screw dislocation, okay? Right, you don't have to do this, yes? People have done this and, 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 and uh, looked at it um, in, in the past. And um, so, uh, and, and this, is, this is what they come up with. It's actually very actually analytical um, uh, uh, formula. It's relatively simple. Again, our shear, uh, so the total energy is core uh, uh, energy plus elastic uh, energy. GB squared over four pi. Uh, so where uh, G is the shear modulus. And then a factor here where uh, we have a Poisson ratio, yes. And uh, an angle alpha. Now, angle alpha is the angle you have between the line direction of a dislocation and the Burgers vector. Yeah. So, mm. so if I have, for instance, a very simple dislocation loop with the Burgers vector here, yes, and I define this as my uh, unit vector along the, so the direction of uh, the, the line direction, uh, so. Uh, in this case, uh, the alpha angle is zero, yes? In this case, the alpha angle is 90 degrees, okay? So the, the, the second term here is related to the type of dislocations we have, okay? Then, of course, comes a term here, L, which is the length of the dislocation, yeah? the more length, the more energy, and then the factor uh, basically comes from the integration uh, of, um, of the uh, elastic energy is ln r divided by r0 plus c. Mm -hmm. And this factor c is uh, basically the core contribution and is about 2. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can write is about 2. And, um, and R and R0 are basically the, uh, these integration limits I was talking about, these cutoff values. R0 is somewhere slightly uh, larger than the, uh, the lattice parameter of, of iron. And R, 
yes, the, the upper cutoff is around 100 nanometers. I'll show you in a moment how we, we, you can calculate it. Hmm? And so, um, so this equation really holds between these two limits. Hmm? Okay. Um, Right? Because um, at the, the, uh, the elasticity, hmm? um, uh, and, and the reason is because of ele the elasticity uh, theory only holds between these two uh, limits. Hmm? So uh, what do I mean? For instance, if I, you know, I, I plot the, 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 the shear stress that's surrounding a, a screw dislocation, right? Okay? as a function of distance. I, I just told you it goes as 1 over the distance, okay? So it goes as so tau x, if I only look at one plane, yes? Um, uh, so it goes as 1 over x. So, uh, so, so the, um, uh, the shear stress would go like this, like this black line here, right? It's a straight line in a log-log plot. However, in the core, it's not as it's not as high. The stress is not the shear stress is not high, and also at the big distance, it's also not that high. Here, it's because there is a breakdown of elasticity. On this side, it's because there are other defects within that uh, that radius. Hmm? Okay. All right. Let, let's see. Um, for instance, uh, if if you want to know what. Um, what you want to plug in for big R here, well, you can say it's steel, so um, we probably have dislocations all around, even if it's well recrystallized. So our R value hmm, will be half the average spacing of dislocations. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll talk about this uh, uh, as, as we uh, discuss uh, dislocation density, but say um, your dislocation density is uh, 10 to the 14th uh, per uh, uh, meter minus 2. I'll, 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 I'll tell you in a moment what, um, um, how come you have this very uh, strange uh, way of um, um, uh, defining a, a density in meters minus 2. Hmm? But, but say that's your dislocation density. Then you can show that um, the, the distance between two dislocations, if you know the dislocation density, the, the distance between two dislocations will be 1 over the square root of the dislocation density. Yes? Mm -hmm. and, um, and what we take as for R, we take about half this distance. Yes? That's, that, gives, that would give you an idea of how far um, out is the influence of a, uh, uh, the, the stress field of a dislocation reaches. Hmm? So if I do this, oh, I, uh, so I just plug in this 10 to the 14th uh, per uh, uh, meter minus 2, and this gives me 10 to minus 7 meters divided by 2, and so that's 50 nanometers. Okay? So it's actually much smaller than a typical grain size. And typical grain sizes will be in steels, will be between 10 to maybe 20 microns. And then, uh, you know, you have some uh, uh, grain refined steels, which may, may go as low as 7 to 8 microns. Um, and so, you know, th this, this, the distance of the influence, as it were, of a dislocation is, is much smaller than a, the, the size of a cr grain, um, and it's of the order of 100, 100 nanometer is a good guess, first guess, hmm? if you don't know the dislocation density, for instance. Just, just a moment here about dislocation density. Hmm? Why do we have this strange uh, uh, unit? meters minus 2, that is because a dislocation density is the number of dislocations uh, per unit volume. Okay, so uh, let's simply, just for, to simplify things, let's say we have a grain that's uh, 
that's perfect. That's a cube grain, yes, with uh, the length here of the sides is one meter, right? So in total here, I have a cube meter, yes? And, and say, um, for some uh, odd reasons, we've managed to have a crystal with only edge dislocations, and all these edges are, are very straight, they're very straight, and they just go this way. They go from this side to this side. Hmm? Uh, well, what is my dislocation density for this particular case, okay? Well, I'm, I'm saying, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dislocations. I have seven dislocations yeah, in a, a cube of one, so seven dislocations in a cube of um, one a cubic meter. Uh, the length of these dislocations is one meter, yeah, one meter. One meter for every dislocation, okay? So it's seven meters of dislocations in a cube, yes? So I have here seven times 10 to the minus two dislocations. That's my density of dislocation, okay? I have seven meters of dislocations per cube meter. That's, no. so if you know this, uh, this unit doesn't uh, look as strange anymore, okay? Good. All right. okay. Good. So, well, um, it's always good to, you know, certainly when um, uh, you get a formula, to, uh, to just plug in numbers and see, uh, you know, how, if, if you ever want to plug, use this formula, what, what do you have to plug in? Hmm? Well, so let's look at this formula, again, this is the total energy of a dislocation. So it, 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 has, it takes care of um, the core energy and the elastic energy around it, okay? So this is the formula you just saw, and so we just go through all these parameters, try to find out um, where we're at. So um, first of all, um, well, uh, our modulus, we take the room temperature modulus for ferrite, for instance, uh, that's 82 gigapascal. Mm. With these formulas, uh, as, as with any formulas, always be careful with the units you're using, because, you know, if, uh, okay, so that needs to be changed. Uh, usually the gigapascal things, you always have to change them in newtons, uh, uh, meters. Uh. The B, uh, B is Burgers factor. I'll show you how we calculate this Burgers factor for uh, BCC iron, but at this stage, just take it from me. It's 0.25 nanometers. Nanometers. So again, I turn this into meters. Uh, it's a 0.25 times 10 to the. Uh, this should be a minus nine, by the way. If you uh, if you made the copies already, make sure this is minus nine. I just noticed this. Um, we take. Uh, we look at. Uh, Screw dislocation, say. So we, we take alpha equal to zero. Yeah. We take L equal to, well, here we have to make a decision, right? Uh, how long are we going to take this, 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 loca this dislocation? Well, let's say we're looking at a tiny bit of dislocation, a very short bit of dislocation. Actually, it's as, it's as long as the Burgess factor. Yeah? Just remember that it's a small amount, yeah? a small piece of dislocation. Uh, the outer cutoff. Uh, radius we had uh, calculated on the basis of our uh, dislocation density to be 50 nanometers. Our inner cutoff, we uh, we said, you know, something that's slightly bigger than the um, uh, the unit um, than the unit cell uh, dimensions. Um, a, uh, a way that, uh, or a value that people very often use is 1.5 times the Burgers factor, okay? C, as I told you, uh, and just take it from me without uh, explanations, is 
uh, about two, this parameter two. And of course, uh, because we like to express things in electron volt, and I'll, sh uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment why, um, I also give you the, um, the relation between one electron volt and joule. So you just plug all these numbers in this formula, hmm? right? And, and you find 3.56 EV, yes? Okay, um, so what, is, what does this mean? Yeah? Um, uh, is, is that, you know, is, uh, should, should, you know uh, should, I, should we be impressed? Is this large, is this small? For us, what's important is to relate this to thermal energy, yes? So at, at room temperature, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, 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 because of the lattice vibrations, because of the temperature, uh, we can supply, yes, a certain amount of energy to defects in the crystal, yes, and that's the thermal energy. And um, this thermal energy is, uh, uh, we know, uh, can either be calculated, it's just basically Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Hmm? Okay, and um, so the, uh, if, if, you d if you calculate this for room temperature, hmm, for um, uh, 20 degrees K, you find a value of 25 milli electron volt. It's a good value to remember, yes? Uh, so so um, it's 0, 0.0, and now I have to make sure, uh, 25, yeah, electron volts, okay? Um, right, so, um, you can see that this is uh, m uh, many times smaller, much smaller than 3.56 EV. So you cannot create with just thermal energy, you cannot generate a dislocation, even a very tiny one, yes? Mm -hmm. and because this, this value will, will of course blow up as, as you increase the length of your dislocation, right? And here I only took a very sh short segment of dislocation. Hmm? So dislocations, in contrast to, for instance, vacancies, are not created spontaneously in, um, in, in crystals. Yeah? Hmm? Okay? Um, so we basically have to deform materials, yes? If we, another thing that's interesting is, is to look at, um, uh, is the, the energy of dislocation, is that a constant? So, for instance, if, if I look at the energy of a dislocation on this part of the dislocation and on this part of the dislocation, is that a constant? Yes? Is, uh, well, well, it turns out it's not. And you can see this because there is a, uh, a factor that's related to the type of dislocation I have. So if, um, so if you look at this parameter, yes, for a screw dislocation, alpha is zero. So that means the cosine of alpha is, is, is one. Yes. So th this parameter, this factor here is one. Mm -hmm. However, for a edge dislocation, uh, alpha is uh, 90 degrees. So uh, it's one over one minus uh, Poisson ratio, okay? So um, you will have a difference in the energy of an edge dislocation and a screw dislocation. And uh, so if you go through the calculations, yeah, uh, you find uh, that uh, an edge dislocation is one point in energy of an edge dislocation, 1.4 times the energy of a screw dislocation. So that means that um, uh, because uh, dislocations in general, uh, dislocation loops, have higher energies for edge dislocation relative to screw dislocation, dislocation loops will always tend to be elongated with longer screw segments than edge segments hmm? in order to, to minimize the, to reduce the uh, energy of our dislocations. Okay? Good, so, uh, some, 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 some general thing that is 
uh, that are uh, important. So one of the things I want you to notice is that um, uh, this factor here, uh, natural logarithm r over r0 plus c, it looks like a factor that may have a big impact on you know, what the energy comes out. Actually, it doesn't. It, you know, the value of this factor um, you know, for reasonable uh, ratios of r over r0 is around 5. It's 5-ish, yes? So it, it, and it doesn't change by orders of magnitudes, yeah? So that's an important thing. The, so we, the other factor here with the cosine is related to the, the direction of the dislocation. And, so, and the other stuff is basically constants, g, uh, 4, and pi. So, uh, but we see uh, an important thing here is the b square. The energy depends on the, uh, uh, the magnitude of the Burgers factor. Yes? And so, uh, and we'll see this uh, back uh, in a moment when we consider also the line tension of dislocations. So we'll see that we'll introduce a, 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 a um, uh, parameter called the line tension, which is actually directly related to uh, the uh, energy of the dislocation. Hmm? And that's the line tension. And, and the line tension is equal to a good approximation, gb squared divided by 2. Hmm? Okay. Okay. So what, first of all, um, let's talk about the fact that the energy of dislocation depends on uh, the B value, it, it basically means that um, uh, dislocations will always get configurations with low B square values hmm, to reduce the, um, the energy of the dislocation. And so uh, uh, what, what is that uh, as a consequence? Well, in austenitic stainless steels, yeah, or austenitic steels, or that you remember these are steels with an FCC structure, yes? Mm -hmm. um, and, and here I have to say with a low stacking fault energy, the fact that the energy of a dislocation is proportional to B square, yes, means that the dislocations dissociate. So that means that uh, a dislocation, for instance, this edge dislocation here, hmm? this is the line direction, this is the Burgess factor, and uh, just forget about these um, uh, symbols for a moment here. What you will tend to have is the dislocation will dissociate into what we call two partial dislocations, yes? Two partial dislocations with a stacking fault between them, okay? And the reason is, if, first of all, because there are uh, a, a variety of dislocation Burgers factors are possible in this structure, of, and they have different sizes. But what is important here is that this dissociation happens because the B square of this Burgers factor is, sm is larger than the B square of these two. Yes? So the, you get a dis, dislocation, dissociation. Um, but um, the effect, of course, when you get the dissociation is the creation of a stacking fault and, uh, and of course, that is extra energy because um, when we create a stacking fault, we we disturb the, the normal crystallographic stacking and we increase the energy of a crystal of the dislocation this way. So there is a balance to be uh, had here, but we'll talk about this one in a moment. Um, good. Um, so just for your information, and we'll talk about this at the later stage, what, what I'm using here to describe uh, uh, dislocations in, uh, in FCC crystal, like austenitic steels, is, is so-called Thomson tetrahedron. And um, I, I will give a, a demo of how to use this 
but very short because it's, it's not really central to our, our course, but I'll, I'll show you how, how it works. Hmm? Okay, so what, but what we basically have is that uh, this um, edge dislocation uh, CB, yes, uh, can be dissociated in two partial dislocations, C delta and delta B, yes, and, uh, and you can see they're smaller in size than CB. Hmm? And they have this property that B square of CB is smaller, is larger, excuse me, than CB, um, the Burgess vector for C delta and the Burgess vector for um, delta beta, both squared and summed. Okay? But, okay. Again, we'll, we'll um, come back to that, uh, but it's important um, <coughs> in relation to, to introduce this already at this uh, time so you. Um, you're aware of the fact that these locations can dissociate, and, and they do this because of this B squared dependence. Okay, right. So um, another thing that is of interest now is, say we have a dislocation, yes, in a um, in a in a in a grain in a steel, yes, and um, okay. Um, we, we've, we've said that um, deformation, plastic deformation, permanent deformation, is the result of dislocations moving through the crystal. Yeah. And um, how do they do this? Yeah. How do they do this? Well, it's because when you apply an external force, this force in some way works on the dislocation, makes the dislocations move. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to give you a simple example here. Right? So say this is a crystal, yes? Uh, this is a glide plane. The dislocation, excuse me, the crystal deformation is by slip, yes? So if this slip is by a single dislocation, yes, for instance like this, so I squash this crystal inside itself, I push it inside itself so that there is an extra half plane now here. Right? So when I pull here, yes, this little dislocation moves to the, this end, comes out of the crystal, and I I've, I've have a permanent uh, deformation. Well, so obviously this applied force works on this dislocation, right? And so how do you approach this mathematically? So if you want to know, you know, what's the effect of an applied force on a dislocation? Hmm? Well, um, that's been worked out um, a while ago. And um, I just want to show you how it works. So Again, uh, dislocation move and influence of externally applied force. And um, what we need to um, uh, consider if we want to calculate things, yes? First of all, we need to know our Burgess vector of the dislocation, comes as no surprise. We also need to know what is our unit vector along the dislocation line, yes? And we need to know what the stress state is. You know, what, um, like in, in, in the case I just uh, drew, it's a, you know, it's a simple stress state. It's uniaxial tensile stress, right? So, but um, in general, uh, you know, our, our stress state will, could, will have more than one component, yes? So tensile components and shear components, all right? Okay, okay so let's... Um, um, let us uh, have a look, for instance, right? Let's not apply any force on our crystal, but just let's uh, find a difficult situation with, which, uh, which can easily be calculated. Yeah? Uh, for instance, if I have a screw dislocation in my crystal, yes? It has a stress field around it, yes? Okay? So uh, this matrix, yes, describing the stress state, in the case of a screw dislocation, is this one. 
Hmm? Because I only have shear components, the x, sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz are zero in the case of a screw dislocation, right? And, and, and the values of uh, sigma xy and sigma uh, yz are also known, okay? Say I look at, the screwed, uh, at an edge dislocation, then uh, this matrix here is, is like this, hmm? Hmm? okay? I have uh, sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz, and a sigma xy or yz, hmm? all right? So that's how, I'm just, well, I just want to, to say this, uh, in, in this case, it, it would simply be uh, just one component, sigma xx, okay? Okay. Right, so, so um, but I prefer to um, give you a more complex case because it's also um, uh, more informative. So, okay, now, um, the, um, the force that works on a dislocation yeah, has, has three components, one in the x, the y, and the z direction where we choose the x, y, and z direction in this way here. Uh, the, let, let me make sure I, I have this right. So the, the z direction is along the, uh, the dislocation line. The Y is uh, parallel to the slip plane normal, yes? And the X axis is perpendicular to these two. It makes sense to uh, choose um, an orthogonal basis on, on this, okay? Right. Now, the force mm, uh, is, uh, is calculated by doing uh, is calculated by uh, getting the three uh, components, three uh, components of this vector, the x component, the y component, and z component. And these are the formulas. This, for instance, fx is parameter ay times tz minus az times ty. t are the um, uh, coordinates, the z coordinate and the y coordinate of the um, line uh, direction. Did I say this right? Yeah, of the line direction. Hmm? And a, x, a, y, and a, z are given by these formulas here. Hmm? These, these, so for instance, a, x is sigma x, x times b, x, sigma y, x, y, x times b, y, sigma zx my b times bz, and the same for, or something similar for ay and az. This, this is this whole set here of equations, that's the actual peach curler equation, yes? And it allows you to calculate um, force on dislocations for any um, complex or not complex um, situation, hmm? yes? You know probably this form of the peach curler equation, yes? Mm -hmm. That's usually uh, the simplified and compact form of this equation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That applies when the dislocation geometry is very simple. Mm -hmm. um, so the, it's important that, uh, to remember that because the Burgess factor is always the same, for your dislocation, the force on the dislocation will be the same everywhere, but its direction may be different. Hmm? For instance, if we, when we deform a disloc, um, excuse me, a, a single crystal or a grain in a steel sample, what actually happens inside the grains are loops of dislocation expanding. Yes, expanding. So there will be parts of the dislocations which have an extra half plane pointing outward. Some other parts will have this pointing downward. And the dislocation, this dislocation here will move to the left and this one will not move to the left, move to the right. Otherwise I won't get plastic deformation, right? So in other words, the loop has to expand, yes? 
All right? So this, the force on these two parts is the same, but not the sign, not the direction. That allow, makes it possible for a loop to expand. Okay, so this is important. And, and also, uh, please remember that this is a, um, a uh, uh, simplified form of the peach color equation. This is actually what you need to do. Okay? Now, of course, it's all nice and easy for me to say, but it would be nice if you had some example yes, of how you use this uh, uh, peach curler equation in practice. Yeah? Well, say for instance, you have two screw dislocations. You have one screw dislocation here and another screw dislocation somewhere at the distance, any, anywhere. Yes. And uh, well, this one yeah, um, has a stress field around it. Yes. And I'm trying to figure out what is the influence of this stress field on this dislocation? In other words, what is the force working on dislocation number two due to the presence of dislocation number one? Yeah. So what I do in this case, so I have a screw dislocation going through, uh, uh, going along the z-axis. Remember, we in this. Uh, Peach color uh, formula. We we take the z-axis along the dislocation line. Okay, and then um, this symbol here looks like an edge dislocation, but I use it for just a symbol for dislocation. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but it, here in this case, it's an, a, an, uh, a screw dislocation, right? and I know it's a screw dislocation because I've taken the uh, the unit vector along the dislocation line parallel to the Burgess vector. Hmm? So Burgess vector in this case is necessarily because it's along the z-axis 0, 0, bz. Yes? Okay? And then I have another dislocation yes, at a distance away from uh, the, uh, this first screw dislocation. Right? It's also screw dislocation. And say it's at, it's at the height here uh, D from uh, in the Y direction up. So if this is the glide plane, the dis the, this is the distance D, right? It's, 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 at a, it's away from the original. It's not on necessarily on the, on the same glide plane, okay? Right, so um, now, um, so the Burgers factors of these two dislocations, can, they can be the same or they can be the reverse, right? Okay? So if the Burgess vector are the same, I say uh, z the first Burgess vector is 0, 0, B1, 0, 0, B2 for the second one, and 0, 0, Bz is, is th their common Burgess vector. Or they have, can have opposite Burgess vector. This one, in this case, B1 is 0, 0 plus Bz, for instance, and B2 is 0, 0 minus Bz, okay? Right, and the unit vector along the, both dislocation lines, yes, is zero, zero, 001. It has to be yes, simple, simply, right? And the stress state of our dislocation here is very simply uh, this, this one here, this equation, this uh, um, uh, matrix where I, I, you know, I put in the values or the equations rather for sigma x, y and sigma y, z. So you get this nice uh, matrix, okay? And, no, and now I churn, I just, go th I just simply go through uh, the procedure very simply. Hmm? So first we determine these A parameters. Hmm? This is the equations that I showed you and I plug in the values for uh, sigma xx and sigma xy and the values for uh, the bx, by, bz. Hmm? So in, in, uh, this is what I get. ax is this, ay is this, and az is zero. Hmm? Okay, so the next step is now to determine the three uh, coordinates of the force, fx, fy, fz. That's, again, I, you just apply 
the formula. Hmm? That's Ay times Tz minus Az times Ty. Um, okay, and I put in the values I had for Tx, Ty, Tz. Hmm? And Tz is 1 in this case. T uh, y is zero and T x is zero, right? So I end up finding very simple equations for f x, f y, and f z. Yes. So these are the three components of the um, uh, uh, force vector. Yes. That the force that from one screw dislocation on the other one. Hmm? where the other one we have said is at the distance d from the slip plane. Hmm? Okay, so this force has uh, this x component, this y component, and no z component. Okay, so uh, when this um, uh, is uh, positive, yes, when this is, uh, so when you have the same signs, so they're both either positive or negative, yes? Then they, they, they will always repel each other. Yeah? The F value will be positive, yes? They will repel each other. If, if the components are negative, there is attraction, yes? So the screw dislocations always attract each other if they have different Burgers vectors, yes? But they always repel each other if they have the same Burgers vector. Hmm? Always repulsive when you have the same sign, always attractive when they have the opposite sign. Okay? Let's um, go to the case of, we just do the same thing, but now we, we imagine that um, the two dislocations are edge dislocations. Yeah? So we have an edge dislocation here and an edge dislocation there. The only thing that changes, the only thing that changes is that this is an edge dislocation, so I have another stress field, yes, the stress field of an edge dislocation, and instead of having, uh, oops, okay, that's an error here, so please cor correct this here. So this, um, the, the B vectors are, of the, the, the z component is zero, so it's uh, bx zero zero, bx zero zero, and here uh, minus bx zero zero. I made an error here, right? Obviously. So I, I will uh, correct this uh, online here, but it's obviously bx zero zero uh, for one and for the other one. I hope it's correct in the text here. But anyway, that's the only thing that changes, right? Is that, or only change, the, the two things change, excuse me, the, the, st the stress around, the, dis the stress state around the dislocation and the Burgess vector. Okay, so, so let's just look at um, our um, applying the peach color formula, same Burgess vector, so here it's correct. Yeah? Uh, B1, 0, 0, and B2, 0, 0 is BX, 0, 0, or opposite Burgess vector. B1 is plus BX, and B2 is minus BX. Okay? So, okay. But otherwise, we, so we, we look at this situation or at this situation, yes? But otherwise, the, you know, the position of this other dislocation is, is, um, pretty much any x, y value is okay. Uh, the unit factor that's the same, it's 001, so we have the dislocation line along the z-axis, and the stress state of dislocation one is just is basically in this um, complex, um, in this, uh, excuse me, matrix, we just replace x, y, y, x, y, z, and x, y, y, and x, Sigma XX, Sigma XY, Sigma YY, and Sigma ZZ with, with the formulas. Yes? And, and the, these, the constants I put uh, before the uh, matrix. 
Same procedure, you determine first the A, A parameters, yes, gives you this, and zero for A, y, A, A, Z, and then you determine the three coordinates of the force vector with the formula, just straightforward application of this, and you find an, there is a, uh, the component has a force in the x direction, in the y direction, yes, and in the z direction. Okay? Okay. So, now, yeah, you can look at this, um, um, uh, this interaction hmm? when they have the same sign and different signs. Yes? And so, and what the way it's usually pr represented is in the following way. You have an, a y-axis where you uh, uh, take the force, yes, the force, that's uh, this here. Yeah. Um, so that's the, this, the magnitude of the force is this. The, so if you have uh, an Fx and an F, Fy and an Fx, right, you... The magnitude of the force, yes, is... Um, you can plot it as a function of x over y, okay? So x is the distance in, uh, in the glide plane, and y is the distance from the glide plane, okay? So if they have the same sign, the interaction goes like, so that means the, uh, the two dislocations look like this, yes? You have the uh, force, yes, uh, is uh, re repulsive, yes, and then when the x parameter gets smaller or the y parameter gets larger, uh, it drops and it becomes zero, yes. In this situation, x is equal to y, right? So if x is equal to y, this look Excuse me. The dislocations are located at 45 degrees to each other. Okay, so then I have no force, right? So that is a point of stability, right? So if the dislocation um, uh, is in this point, there there is no um, uh, no force working on. Yeah? However, yes, if I push it a little bit further, yes, a little bit further, yes, closer to each other, uh, sorry, well, yeah, uh, closer in this direction, yes, then the interaction becomes attractive again, continues to be attractive, yes. In fact, yes, uh, it can be very low, it can become very low. So in this case, I have a configuration that looks kind of like this. The two dislocations with the same Burgess vector are on top of each other. Yeah? If the dislocations have an opposite sign, like in this case, we get the reverse force distance uh, situation. Okay, but this will take us a little. You know, continuing with this will take us a little bit too far for the time uh, we're at now, and so uh, because I'm already over time, I'll just keep this for. Um, next Tuesday. So thank you very much for your patience and I'll see you next Tuesday. And I'll, I'll make the correction to this uh, uh, drawing uh, by today. So perhaps wait until if you're planning to print out the content of the, f of the file on the uh, on E-class, wait till uh, t uh, this evening to do, to do this. Okay, thank you.